Can you tell I'm excited about spring? That sun, yo, mm, so warm. Anyway, so today's video is on spring and some tips for your lawn coming into spring and what you need to do. And also I'm gonna answer a few questions that I put up on Facebook and Instagram of the people asked towards the end of this video as well, so stay tuned. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. Let's just get straight into this video, hey? So let's just talk about some tips to get your lawn in tip top shape for this spring this year and to lead you into summer nice and efficiently. Tip number one, which is a pretty common question I get asked all the time, is when can I fertilize my lawn for the first time coming out of winter? Now it's gonna depend on where you live and your grass type. As you can see, I've got a cool season grass type in a climate that gets a lot of frosts and normally warm season grass is pretty dormant. But I can fertilize mine now because it is actually actively growing. If your lawn isn't actively growing, so it's still dormant, it got a brown sort of a color, like this lawn. Just over the fence just here, let's have a look. Brown. So I recommend if your lawn looks like that, do not fertilize it because you're wasting your fertilizer because it's just gonna sit down in the soil and eventually leach away because the grass can't actually take up the nutrients that are given off in that fertilizer. So. Only fertilize when your grass is actively growing. If there's heaps of frosts and things around as well still, I recommend you don't fertilize as well. Wait until your grass is actively growing. So if you're in Queensland, go ahead. Start fertilizing near Perth. Fertilize now. You've probably been fertilizing already for a month anyway. But if you're in a climate like myself, like Melbourne, um, Central West, even Sydney, with cool season grass, you can fertilize it now. Warm season grass, wait until there's some active growth. Tip number two is when should I renovate my lawn? So I get this question all the time leading into spring. Some people get a little bit keen and do it a little bit too early. Now the best time to do it is when your average soil temperatures are around 22 degrees and above during the day. So if they're a little bit lower than that, hold off on your renovation. In an area like here in Orange, I actually don't talk about doing renovations on your warm season grass at least until October long weekend. That's generally when you wait to actually do a renovation on your lawn. Now this is, I'm talking about for warm season grass, those soil temperatures. With cool season grass, I recommend you don't do anything until autumn anyway, because autumn's the best time to renovate cool season grass, has more time to repair. You can join up and oversee with that as well. That's the best time to do it. But this time of year, your cooch, kaikuyu, buffalo, and zoysia, great time of year to renovate in spring. So renovation basically is giving your lawn a scalp, so getting your mower out and cutting down your lawn very low. That's gonna help bring some thatch out of the lawn. Then give it a core aerate, so that's gonna decompact the soil and get some oxygen down into the root zone. Next, if you have a really, really bad thatch problem, so a heaps big buildup of dead and organic matter in your actual grass underneath the leaf, I'd recommend you do a scarify of your lawn or a dethatch to get all that thatch out of there so you can get air infiltrating back into your soil properly as well. And lastly, give your lawn a top dress. Now with buffalo, there is a little bit of a difference in when you are renovating. Don't scarify the lawn with, a, with buffalo because it just can't really handle too heavy of a scarification on the lawn. So give it a scalp, but not too heavy as well. If you do want to do a dethatch and it's really, really thatchy, just don't dig in down to the soil with the scarifier, all right? Because otherwise you're gonna damage your lawn. It's gonna take quite a while to come back. So just be really careful with buffalo. Now here's one that people need to really get on top of because if you're looking after your lawn a lot all the time, you need to start thinking about preventing black beetle and insects as well. So that's tip number three, is preventing insects in your lawn. So in Australia, we've got a big problem with black beetle. I see posts all the time, especially on Australian lawn fanatics, of people struggling with black beetle. Once it hits into summer, that's when they're normally pretty active. You can sometimes get them a little bit earlier if you're in Queensland, in Perth, some areas that get hotter, just that little bit quicker. But it is a time now to get down a preventative insecticide. So for example, a couple of good ones, and the best one on the market is a Celeprin. So a Celeprin's pretty expensive, but it will last you six months, and it's gonna get you coverage like basically all through the growing season. So that's gonna be your best bet. Now, I don't have any acelloprene, so I'm not personally applying any because it's too expensive for my budget. Somebody sponsor me. No, I'm kidding. But anyway, but I'm gonna be using imidacloprid. So a trade name for that is Pride. There's a couple of different trade names out there as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. But you can find imidacloprid down at CRT and get it from most turf suppliers like Lawn Pride and you can get it from Globe Growing Solutions, New Turf, etc, etc. You can get a midicloprid around the place and it's pretty, it's, it's generally goes for around about 50 to 80 bucks per litre but 
you know, it's going to protect you for three months. So if you want to know any more information on insecticides and how to apply them and how black beetles work and their life cycle, I'll link a video up above that you can have a look at and check it out because I don't want to put too much information on you guys today, but check that video out. I talk about how they work, when to best apply it, how to apply it, and how to get on top of them if you're currently having problems with them and they're damaging your lawn. All right, so the soil temps are starting to warm up. We're starting to see some different weeds popping up in the soil, so it's time to get your pre-emergent down. Now, spring is, the start of spring especially, is the best time to do this because you've got to get it down before the weeds actually start emerging. Even though you might not see any weeds coming up, generally the soil temps are starting to go up, so the weeds are starting to emerge. So there's heaps of different pre-emergents on the market. I'm not gonna go really in depth today on it. I'll just list a few though, Barricade, Embargo, Oxidiazon, and Pronamide are some common ones. Now, if you've got big problems with Paspalum, jump on the Barricade. My favorite pre-emergent of all time is Barricade. The only issue with Barricade and Embargo and Pronamide as well is it has a root pruning effect. So if you've done a renovation recently, I recommend you don't use it because your renovation is gonna be slowed up quite a bit. And if you have a pretty new lawn, don't use one of those pre-emergents either. You're going to have to opt out for something like Oxidiazon, which it doesn't have a root pruning effect, but it's not going to cover weeds like Paspalum. But it does that summer grass and winter grass as well. So have a do a bit of research on that. Most grass types are pretty great with all of those pre-emergents. Pronamide doesn't work with most cool season grasses, but I've got a link, I'll link it up above and link some videos in the description where I talk about pre-emergence more. So go check those out if you want more information. All right, there are those four tips. Now, there are a couple other questions people ask me generally, so I'll quickly just say some really quick. Um, if you want to seed your lawn, if you've got cool season grass, it's getting close. If you live in a climate like myself, October long weekend is the best time to do it. Um, but I generally recommend you don't so dang cool season grass in spring unfortunately unless you really have to because you've got more chance of weeds competing that time of year because the soil temps are going up best time to seed is in autumn because your soil temps are going down so you've got a lot less weeds actually germinating that time of year apart from winter grass and a couple of broadleaf weeds which are pretty easy to handle well winter grass isn't but you can deal with that when it dies out in summer but anyway, that's one tip. If you're wanting to seed warm season grass, spring still isn't the best time. You want to wait till the soil temperatures are a lot warmer. So ones that you can seed that actually come in seed form are Kaku and Cooch. And you're going to have to wait until probably the end of spring or the start of summer, really no matter where you are, because otherwise they're just not going to germinate. So I generally don't recommend you overseed or seed Kaku or Cooch anyway. Just stolenize it. So pull out some runners or scar scarify your lawn and plant those extra runners in areas that are bare, water them in like seed, and they'll actually come up as a new section of your lawn heaps quicker than seeding, and it's cheap too. Well, it doesn't cost you anything apart from hiring a scarifier out. All right, so I put up a post on Facebook and Instagram earlier today asking you guys if there's any questions you had for your lawn coming into spring, so let's jump straight into it and be real quick. And I'll go through these questions pretty quickly. So Matthew Cameron says, best way to encourage growth post dormancy. So there's no way to kick start your lawn um, out of dormancy really quickly unless your lawn is actually starting to green up. Because if your soil temps are too low, your lawn's going to stay dormant. That's just the way it is. But once you actually start to see some shoots coming up, you can start applying a soil amend amendments well, like I do with my special mix in my video, which I'll link up above. Check that out to check out soil amendments. But you can also give your lawn a fertilize once you start to see some growth because it's ready to take up some nutrients. So I recommend using a slow release fertilizer or a controlled release one. For example, something like Anderson's nutri -DG, like I use all the time. You could use some Sports Flex, some Maintain from Lawn Pride, some Champion from Plant Doctor. Just make sure you use a slow release fertilizer. <laughs> Andrew Schultz, is that how you pronounce the name bro? I hope so. Is a zebra black and white? Is a zebra black with white stripes or white with black stripes. <laughs> Here's one from Tonya Ryan. How to repair frost damaged lawn, please. A buffalo weathered the Melbourne winter quite well until a couple of morning frosts last week. Yeah, good old frosts, don't love them. Just seemed to take its last bit of will to stay green. Looking very brown and dry in patches. Any tips for spring rejuvenation would be appreciated. So frost damage is pretty common. It just means it's going into dormancy because it's getting hit with such cold temperatures and obviously a bit of a freeze over, you're jumping back into dormancy. But now since we're starting to warm up, you'll see that frost damage actually start to repair itself pretty quickly. I had frost damage, damage on my lawn here. As you can see, it's really green up in the last week just because our soil temps have come back up. So you'll see it start to kick back into gear pretty naturally. 
Give your lawn a couple of waters as well if it's looking dry. Make sure you do deep waters as well, deep infrequent watering. So about an inch a week with buffalo, one to two times, so half an inch, inch each time you actually water your lawn. But if it's got some green greenness to it now, chuck some fertilizer down on it and put some soil amendments on it and kick it back into gear like that. And you'll see your lawn come back into gear pretty quickly because our temps are starting to rise now. Is it a waste of time applying humic acid two to four weeks before dethatching? Been told applying humic acid is good for reducing thatch and improving root strength slash growth. So that is correct. It does actually improve your root strength and the growth of your roots as well. And to an extent, it does reduce thatch because it actually helps the microorganisms in your soil break down that organic matter in the thatch layer, I suppose. But it's not really going to make that much of a difference in two to four weeks. You need to be applying humic acid for, I'd, I'd say, nearly up to a season to be seeing some awesome results with it. You'll see a bit more root density and root growth um, after a couple of months of using it. But to actually breaking down your thatch and making a big difference a month out from dethatching your lawn, it's not going to make a big difference, to be honest. So go ahead and dethatch your lawn, but continue applying that humic acid throughout the season. You'll know, start to see a huge difference in your thatch and the root density of your lawn as well, as well as the uptake of nutrients in your soil. Wintergreen and brizzy. Scalping, best with a rotary or a cylinder. So I definitely scalp with a rotary mower because it's got a bit more power and it's going to really dig out your grass a lot better. Cylinder mower will just eat keep struggling and getting clogged up and, and shutting down etc. So cylinder mowers will struggle just a little bit like that. Go low in one pass or step down over multiple passes as well. It just depends on how much your mower can handle. If, you, if your mower can do it in one pass easily, go for it. You might need to drop it down bit by bit because generally when you go from long lawn to short lawn when you're scalping, your mower is going to shut off because it hasn't got enough power to get to do it. So that's what you do there. And should I worry about dethatching if I'm scalping low? Definitely, because scalping will bring out some thatch, but not all your thatch, because you're gonna have thatch um, actually in your soil as well. Depending on your grass type, generally with Kuching Kaki, you get quite a lot of thatch in your actual soil profile as well. So dethatching with a scarifier is actually gonna dig that thatch out of your soil as well. So make sure you do that if you've got quite a lot of thatch down in there. This is from Troy SSSSS1. If soil wetter strips the waxy surface of soil, does that mean it's strong enough to strip nutrients from soil as well? No. It's not going to strip any nutrients from your soil. It's only going to help penetrate past that waxy surface and break that waxy surface down, but that's about it. It's not going to take any nutrients out of your soil. We've got, I am a kid. Hey, Nate. How do you get your lawn not to be patchy anymore? So it depends on your grass type. I know with you, Nate, you've got perennial ryegrass at the front, so you're gonna to have to be looking at an overseed with that because perennial ryegrass is a bunch type grass and it's not gonna spread sideways. If you've got a patchy lawn and it's kuchu kaikuyu, or, or even buffalo, and it's a grass that has stolons or rhizomes, so some runners, and it's, it will actually creep sideways if you try to promote some growth across the lawn. So when you do your renovation and your top dress, that's really going to encourage that growth laterally as well. So just being on a good fertilizer program and looking after your lawn like that is going to help it thicken up quite a bit. But if you've got cool season grass or a bunch type grass, you're going to have to overseed it. Okay, so that's about it for this video. Thanks guys so much for watching that. If you have any more questions on that, because I'm sure I didn't answer every single question on that, chuck it in the comments below down here on YouTube and I'll answer it for you if I know the answer. I'll be honest, I don't know the answer to everything. I'm a greenkeeper, but greenkeepers don't know everything as well. But anyway, thanks guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Exciting season on the way. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And you have a good week. Mm, so I didn't do an ending for this week. I was supposed to do a shot of my old lawn at my mate's place. Just, it's like not that far at all. Just a, well, a drone flight away from here. But I didn't because it's been raining, so I haven't had a chance to do it. But, but rain's a good thing, I suppose. Have a squeeze. Can't really tell out the window, but the rains of Vinnie Marge. Yes!